Hey guys, welcome to another Critique the Community. Today we are going to be critiquing, not really critiquing, we're just gonna be showing you and talking about some really incredible photos that have made money being published. That was the theme of this critique. But I found this so interesting, and Patrick and I were talking about this. We wanna do it again next week, but we're gonna do it a little bit different. So next week, you can only upload images if you were hired or the image was licensed for $2,000. And we're not talking about shooting a wedding for five grand. We're not talking about that. We're talking about being hired for a specific photo shoot and you were either paid at least $2,000. We're looking for more money, um, but at least 2,000. Or you took an image and it was licensed for some thing and you got at least $2,000. But here's the thing, we want you guys to upload the image, and you can do that right now in the link that's in the description. And we want you to tell us how much money you made, and we want you to tell us the story of how you got the job and, and everything. And then what we're gonna do in next week's video is we're gonna find our most interesting pictures, and who knows how many will get uploaded. Maybe there'll only be five or 10, I don't know. But then next week, we're going to come to you guys with the most interesting and successful images, and we're going to tell the images story in the next critique. So they need to be rather descriptive. Yeah, Don't exactly. just write a sentence or two, like write a good paragraph. Yeah, but don't write a lot of paragraphs or else we're not <laughs> gonna read it either. Yeah. So put, put at the very top of the description, put the amount you made and then like one paragraph of the story. And, and if the image was part of something larger, maybe you, it's like a portrait, but you took five portraits or something. Yeah. There could be a lot more going on. Another thing we're going to do with this critique that we haven't done before is we're going to listen to what a lot of the commenters oh, said. Oh, Patrick, this is a slippery slope. And we're slippery going to slope. move the highest rated image anywhere else other than the Let's first one. Let's just slide. put it at the end. We can have everybody Wait. waiting until okay. the very end. But we're still the... gonna do a random winner. So the highest rated okay. image wins a tutorial from the fstoppers.com slash store, mm -hmm. but then also the, high, you know, the highest rated one. Okay. So do you wanna pick a random number? Two. Number two. <laughs> Okay. So let's go ahead and look at the first image, which is really the second image. You guys, you can never be satisfied. I, I was very surprised how many of the highest rated images of this critique were nature photos like this. Really? I did not expect that at all, but mm. uh, these are really good shots. Are you ready, Patrick? Oh, and let me say this one other thing before we get started. Now, normally this is a critique. We have the highest rated images, we have the lowest rated images, we have some middle images, and we kind of talk about them all. This critique, we got a lot of really good submissions that I think are inspiring and worth looking at. But then when I looked at some of the bad shots, it seems a little strange for us to critique images that have been published by someone. I, I looked at some of the pictures and they were so awful. The only thing I want to say is, who the hell would have? But then you feel like we're talking bad about a potential client of yeah, theirs. The, yeah. yeah, there's just, it was just weird to kind of talk bad about things that have actually made you money because the whole point of these critiques is to kind of inspire people that yes, you are good enough to create well, a website and to show a, a wide variety of images that, you know, yeah. have commercial value. But for that reason, I didn't pick any of like the worst of the worst photos like we normally do. We usually sprinkle a few of those in there those are not gonna be in this critique today. Well, and the other thing, I know this is kind of a long intro, but are we critiquing these based on the genres that these images would fall into on their own? Because there's not like a genre of publishable images. No, not at all. So when we see an image like this first one of a bird, I mean, is this falling into like wildlife photography or? I, I don't, I mean, I think it'll be interesting if we get to a specific image where you feel like the genre completely changes the way that you rate the image. But I just, I feel like this is a great wildlife image. It's also a great commercial image. Okay. Well, I'm going to rate them as if this is the genre you do full time. And okay. you're trying to get hired to do this type of work over and over again. Well, let's do it then. All right. Three, two, one. You went Four. three. I went three. Yeah. I mean, this is, this is, such a simple decision for me. I don't see how you can give this just three. There's something about it that it looks very painterly or something, and it almost looks like, is the, is the depth of field faked? Like when I look at the far left and I look at some of the plants down there, there's something going on to where I feel like 
It looks like the flowers to me. aren't getting slightly out of focus <laughs> over and over. It it just feels like something's going on in the bottom. That it it's a cool photograph, but I feel like the depth of field or the post production, maybe just the lens. Maybe this is like a two hundred f two, and that's what it looks like. But something about it just it, it feels a little fake to me on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And well, there's something weird going on on the bottom left. It does look like it's been uh, artificially uh, blurred. Well, I wasn't going to say that. I was just going to say uh, like stamp tool, clone tool. Like they were covering something up down there, like a fire hydrant. I would hope there's not a fire hydrant <laughs> out there in the middle. That would that would pull you out of this shot. I mean, I feel like the shot is amazing. The bird looks great. It's backlit. I mean, how perfect is that? The depth of field is beautiful. The faint color. You know, I think a lot of photographers have a tendency, including myself, to go crazy with the vibrance or the saturation. This is so restrained. I just, I feel like this is beautiful. This is such an easy four. Uh, I, I wouldn't be upset if you gave this five stars. If you zoom into the bottom right, does that look like a bunch of cloning? Does that pattern, like, look, I mean... It does a little bit, yes. <laughs> I don't know. There's something going on with the... the post-production, especially on the bottom half, that now that I look at it more... I mean, I come I on. There's like, maybe there's three or four cloning marks that could be fixed in two seconds. It could but. be fixed, but that's a still a three. It's like... It's, but you didn't notice that when you rated it a three. You're just now noticing it. It was subliminal. It. It's like, no, it, it was a vibe that I got. Whatever. And now that I look at it, I feel confident that this is a three based on some of the post-production. All right. Community gives it 3.52 and... They didn't see... My, my. Well, this is what I want to tell you. So this is the second highest rated image, really? and it only has 3.52, so it only goes down from here <sighs> until the final image. All right, so this is image number two. So this is the winner of a free tutorial. Oh, yes, I forgot I said that. Yes. You just said that. Huh? Uh, I forgot. So, yes, if you guys want to check out our tutorials at fstoppers.com slash store, uh, David will be sending this photographer a private message on F-Stoppers. But if you want to dream about winning in the future and which one you will choose, head over there. You can check out the tutorials. Anything that we make uh, is given away for free. If you are the highest rated shooter or the random, random winner. The random Two uh, tutorials, winner. every critique. Are you ready? This is one of the ones where I'm like... I don't know what genre this fits in, but it, it's got that flavor of being like in the advertising world. Like, Yeah, it's quirky. Yeah. If it were just like, imagine if this didn't have the shopping cart. Or it was just the shopping cart. I mean, I could, imagine, I could imagine it being just the shopping cart and being done really well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the, uh, the squirrel without the shopping cart, not that impressive. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Uh, I'm in between a three and a four. I, I I like this one a lot. I think this has a lot of commercial viability. It's quirky. It's funny. I don't know if it's advertising like a grocery store or a peanut company or... I don't know what this... It would be really interesting to know how this was used. But this is quirky enough to where I feel like I, I understand why somebody would hire you to shoot this or why somebody would see this in your portfolio and want to license it. Could it work for stock photography of some sort? I, I'm sure it could, you know, uh, saving up for retirement, yes, uh, yes. stuff like that. It's fidelity or something. Yeah, I feel like if I, was, if I was looking at a fidelity ad. It'd be a little cleaner. I think this would be done at a, at a higher level. And I'm gonna say some things that sound ridiculous, but I feel like the posture and expression of the squirrel is a little crappy. It it almost feels like the squirrel is is crappy uh, taxidermy. Yeah. You know, it doesn't feel like a proud squirrel pushing his basket of nuts. It just kind of feels like this Photoshop thing. Um, well, to be fair, most people pushing a cart in nature aren't super happy. Yes, but he is because he has saved, saved for his future. And so I just, I feel like this is, it almost feels like a really talented photography student's work or something. Like I could see this as some very well done college project, but in terms of a super seasoned commercial photographer, it just doesn't feel quite as polished to me. I can see But that. I still rated it at four stars. Community. I almost, I almost feel like if this was done for Fidelity or somebody, it would almost 
be stripped of all the nature and he would be just on a clean background. Maybe, maybe. But it's the funny part of pushing the cart. Maybe. Community gives it 3.46. Still a pretty high rating. Yep. This has to be in China. China. When we were in a place like this in Hong Kong, right, yep. with Elia, Elia was on the ground shooting straight up. I, for a second, I was thinking he had a drone shooting down. But yeah, this is kind of the opposite angle, but still very interesting. So this has to be a drone shot. There's no way. I mean, helicopter, but I, I would imagine drone. I mean, to you be could, perfectly centered like this in a helicopter would be... And this low in a helicopter. Yeah. So I imagine this is a drone shot. And I mean, drone photography has opened up so many doors now. You can get stuff like this that would cost thousands of dollars, if not be impossible, just a few years ago. All right, let's rate this. Three, two, one. Three stars, we agree. I, I find it interesting. I mean, I could even see this as some sort of fine artwork, you know, just printed and hung on the wall. But remember, this image was published. Now, I saw you getting into a debate with people in the comments. Does selling art prints that are hung on people's walls, does that count? And what did you say? I said if you've sold one image to some other person just for like art on their wall, I kind of felt like that didn't count. Okay. Because they're making the argument that David's Atlas could count and he sold one print and he probably- I think he sold like five or did seven. Did he? Or I thought it yeah. was one. No, but... it was more than that. Okay, so maybe, I don't know, but it was a touchy area. Cause I'm like, if you've just printed one in like some local Your bar- Your mom bought it. Yeah, yeah, it's like in some, you know, restaurant downtown. It just feels like somebody could have been- That wasn't the spirit of it the It could have been, contest. they could have been doing you a favor, you know? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, this so, one, this, this image is interesting, but I, I keep thinking if this was published online, it's kind of busy. Like I keep thinking like where text would go. I know that's not part of this whole process, but it could be, you know, the last one could easily have by the Fidelity Freedom Fund and it has some text and whatever. Yeah. This one's very busy. And when I first saw it, I almost felt like it was computer generated. Like when you first look at it, it just, all these leading lines coming in almost makes you feel like those little worlds where you take the picture and make a little sphere out of it. Yeah. But all right, community gives it 3.44. What in the world is going on with that bird? It's the same it bird is, as the one on the plant, on the, on the... That's what I'm thinking. Like, at the very least, there's no way that this is one image. There's oh, you, no don't, you don't think it's two birds? Maybe it is. I'm saying this is the same species of birds. Oh, But when he's yeah. not flying, his head looks kind of normal. I'm just wondering if this photographer a took a picture of the same bird, put them together and made it look like one is feeding the other. But I don't think there's any way that this is a real photograph. Uh, I think you could be wrong. I, I certainly could. I have I been think known a higher, to be wrong before. I think there's a higher chance that you're wrong. Really? I bet you the photographer, I, I would say there's like a 70% chance the photographer's like, nope, I caught that in the act. Really? I mean, otherwise, just to find a random picture of the bird with the caterpillar and then the same bird looking with its mouth open, I mean, <laughs> that seems unlikely to me too, but. All right, I, I do want to mention, guys, um, when we have these debates and you guys are always good about. Leaving comments on YouTube? Yeah, you can leave a comment on YouTube and sometimes I see that, but we get so many comments on YouTube and so much hate on YouTube. I can only read like 5% of YouTube comments. So make sure that you also write the comment on the post on F-Stoppers, and that's going to uh, make sure that we actually read it. Are you ready? I am ready. Three, two, one. I'm between it. I could have <laughs> easily thrown that pinky out. So I think it's fake, and I rated it higher than you who thinks it's real. Yeah, I don't know that I care if it's real or not. I just, I, I keep trying to think if I was a, potential client and I went to your website and I saw this. It's done really well. It, it probably is a four. I probably would change my vote to a four. It's just so quirky and funny and I can see why somebody would have bought this. Well, see. But what they bought it for. Yeah, that's the question. That's the question. And that's why I'm so interested in this next critique because we will stories. hear the story and then we will tell you on video as well. So it's not just going to be us 
talking about the images, we will have the story and we will have the amount of money that it makes. Because I want to know how much money did you make on this photo? But I don't know. So let us know in the comments. Uh, community gives it 3.44. So we were just back in Charleston. Uh, I was painting my house, which is now a rental property. Uh, you went back to start your $5,000 a month drug. Yes. How was that? It went well. I actually filmed a video and then I left it on a hard drive at the house. Okay. So I hope to be able to get that footage back. These files are so large that even though it was like a 20 minute video, two cameras, you know, it's gigs and gigs of stuff. So trying to download that here in Puerto Rico is difficult. So hopefully there'll be another video. I'm going to leave it at that because I think the video will be more fun to watch the okay. actual process. But yeah, that went well. How did the deck go? Deck went well. We were, we were arguing. So here's the thing. David is back in Charleston. He's managing my rental house. Or doing Airbnb stuff. And <laughs> I was like, hey, go ahead and paint the back porch. It's looking kind of rough. And so he just said, cool, the painter's coming next Wednesday. And I said, how much? And he was like, oh, I don't know. I just hired someone. I was like, are you crazy? So I said, get three quotes before you hire somebody. So he comes back and is like, all right, the cheapest quote I got was $4,000. And I'm like, $4,000, are you crazy? How, how long can it possibly take to paint that porch? And he was like, I don't know. And I was like, all right, let's do the math here. I think it's going to take 40 man hours to paint the porch and doing the math and everything. I think these people are charging like 80 to $120 per hour to paint this porch, you know, excluding the cost of the paint and everything. So I said, screw that, David, I'm coming home. I'm going to get some friends. Katie, my wife's going to do this. And he's like, ah, oh, it's ridiculous. You got money, Lee. You should be spending your time better, blah, blah, blah. So I get down there. David ends up helping. I pay him to help and I get one other person. It's me and Katie. We work for 39 hours. So I was almost exactly right. Yeah. It cost $1,100. Paying those two people, all the paint, all the supplies. So I saved $2,900. Now, did you scrape and prep and were they going to do that? So. And is it staining or painting? And like, did you do the rails? Or is it I just, did all the rails. Yeah. I did it all. I, yeah. I didn't, I didn't sand but i power washed the entire thing so i feel like i did a good job i mean and david's like you didn't do as good a job as they did i'm like fine did i do half as good of a job as they, as did? they would have done yeah oh so how do you judge that he just acts like because it was four thousand, they were going to do such a better job i mean i just had my entire house repainted when i moved down here yeah so that i could rent it out yeah and they did an incredible job they did such a good job that all of my neighbors now <laughs> are using the same company to renovate and replace boards and well, paint the house. Well, if my neighbors could see my porch, they would be asking me they the would same be like, question. Who did, what team did I that? Gotta hire, I gotta hire this team, yeah. So is that your Charleston story? Uh, I got one more thing. Let's, let's, uh, let's rate this and then we'll uh, move on. All right, you ready? I think so, sure. Three, two, one. You went four. I'm not a big fan of this picture. I mean, I, okay. Uh, maybe it should be a three. I don't know, but two, you have offended I, me, sir. I could have gone three. It just, this I see this done so many times. And I feel it, like this is done way better than normal, though. It's because of the actual location. Okay. There cool. are some things going on that do make it look a little more interesting the closer I examine it, but I'm just not a huge fan of this sky. It just, like... On first look, the sky and the colors are so contrasty and saturated that it feels like, you know when you have friends who aren't photographers and they post sunset pictures and you're just like, cool man, you got the sunset picture. That's what this sunset feels like. But then yeah. as I look at it, he's super in focus, the mountain's super in focus, but then there's this blur along whatever this is, a water or simulated water. It gives this weird depth of field where it almost feels like it's doing the miniature look, you know, like the tilt shift I, yeah, I lens. I can't quite figure out what's going on. So that makes this a little more interesting because of that. But again, just a dude sitting there, the small guy and big landscape. All right, all right, it's a three. Come on up to a three and meet me, Patrick. I could Come on I, up to I, a three. There's an argument to be made there, but I'm just not a huge, like this is just so dark and, and you know, bright and, it's so dark and so contrasty. dark and bright. Well, the bright, I mean saturated. And contrasty and flat. 
and wide and tall yeah and happy and what sad. do you like about this i don't know i just i i like the overall mood i feel like they have once again restrained themselves with the color we have some interesting colors going on but they're not blowing out my eyeballs and uh i think something weird is going on with the with the blur i, I think they've added some sort of blur but it makes it a little more interesting to me I would, just want that guy to be doing anything else other than... Doesn't this have a name? It's like the hero pose or something. The Instagram pose? Yeah, I, I want him like... At least his arms aren't outstretched. Yeah, that would be bad too. But I just want him like styled and he's carrying... A, he's fishing or he's dancing with a girl or he's jumping in the... Something. Like, I just feel like him just staring out there is... All right, moving on. It's a little boring to me. 3.43. Community liked it. Ooh. Now, is this drone or is this helicopter? I hope this is helicopter. Yeah, this is really high to be yeah. a drone. And in LA, man, they have some really strict. Is, that, is this LA? Yeah. I don't know what LA looks like. I don't know the buildings. Have you, have you, you have seen the new Apple TV moving wallpapers and they just, they shoot slow-mo and helicopters for if they just go forever, it's yeah, amazing. Yeah, it's... And they'll just go over cities or go over the ocean and they're beautiful. It reminds me of this. All right, are you ready? Uh, yes. Three, two, one, four stars. I love this, man. It's like yeah. the contrast and the color, everything that I said was too much in the previous image, I think is working really well here. And this has, there's so many uses for an image like this, you know? Yeah. You could talk about the city. You could talk about real estate. You could talk about urban sprawl. You could talk about maybe, it's not really pollution here, but like there's environmental stuff. Like this image just has a lot of uses and I can see where this probably could have been licensed multiple times, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, Mike Kelly made an entire book, LA Airspace, is that what he called it? Yep. Where, was it It was all just all black and whites, but black it was and white all like this. aerial photographs of LA. Yeah, and uh, he's made good money off that book. And so there's a lot a lot of options here. And then who's the photographer who did New York at night? Vincent? Yeah, Vincent Laferre, Uh also has amazing shots of big cities. So great shot. Uh, community gives it 3.4 stars. All right, I'm going to say this. Say it, Patrick. I'm just going to say it. Say it. This is the style of imagery that I have. I have no understanding of why people buy this. I see this type of, this is like the deviant art sort of thing. And it's cool. I like it. I see the artistic value in it. But out in the general public, I don't see these type of images in <laughs> the magazines, good, on TV, on people's point. walls, <laughs> like in billboards. Like yeah. maybe there's some like call for help, you know, sort of thing. <laughs> Suicide hotline. But even this doesn't have... Oh my have, gosh. No, like you see those sort of things where the guy's like ripping his hair out or something. Like that's what they use to advertise those type of <laughs> yeah, mental health this. illness. I don't know what this is. This is like the Avengers, the Thanos guy, just making everybody turn to dust. But not done at that level. No, it's not. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Doesn't really do a whole lot for me. It's still done well. This reminds me of uh, that critique you did with Josh Rossi here. Mm -hmm. And you guys talked about composites, I think is what it was. But a lot of the images you guys were critiquing were trying to be these movie posters. And that's all he does. If you don't know his work, check it out. But like he's at a very high level with composite work. I feel like this is something that would have been in that critique where he would have said, I see what you're doing and like you've done some cool things, but maybe these brushes are very common and uh, it's not done at the highest level to like reach that type of client. If you want to do a movie poster for like the next horror movie or something, yeah. maybe that's kind of what this fits in. You know what might bother me more than anything is that the image is slightly rotated. You know, I feel like to get her face more symmetrical, I want to tilt this to the left. Yeah, I don't know if that bothers me. What bothers me the most is this like texture of the gauze or whatever, and then it fades into a texture that isn't the same texture. And then there's this little black thing on her left eye, camera right, image right, that
that kind of breaks the continuity. I just feel like, what is going on? It's supposed to be like fabric over her face, but then it fades into a painter's background. Like, I don't know, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, the community likes it more than us at 3.25. How do you think this image was used? Any guess, any speculation? We should have asked everybody to write that in the I know, well. I know. Um, what were we thinking? Yeah, I have no idea. If it's made more than $2,000, submit it again to the next critique. Hmm. Are you ready to rate this? I'm ready. Three, two, one. What? Three. I was in between a four and a five. Really? Yeah. I mean, this is beautiful to me. This looks like some sort of high-end fashion shot or something. There's a lot that I love about this. I love the Apparently composition. Apparently not. I'll tell you what I don't love about it. There is something going on with the retouching on the skin that makes this feel cheap. It's like you can see some acne or pores or, you know, something in the skin, but then next to it, it's like plasticky. And I feel like I see that a lot with retouching where people go total plastic or they don't do any retouching. Mm -hmm. This is in the middle to where I feel like I look at his face and it just feels alien. It's like there's no expression and there's this weird retouch that that pulls me out of this instantly, you know? Mm. I and mean, that's... I love the composition. I, I love a lot about this. But there's something when I go to his face, I just feel this emptiness and this like plasticky skin. It ruins it for me instantly. So I agree with what you're saying. And if you also look at the far side of his face that has the highlight on it, it's almost like that wasn't retouched. Yep. And then the close side was retouched. I was going to say... It's a five. This is flawless. I was going to say they should go the other route and retouch more of the skin, not necessarily on the close side, but on the far side and on his shoulder and on the arm and everything to get it to look as perfect as this side of his face because I feel like this is the vibe this photographer's going for. It's like yeah. he's not trying to make it look like this boxer's getting his ass beat and he's dying of uh, you know, being tired and he's sweating. It's like a beautiful fashion model is posing with boxing gloves on. And that's why I love this shot. But then it feels like there's something about the model that's not quite in the fashion realm. Like, I agree. It's very difficult. I remember having discussions with Joey Wright with his swimwear. Like, what is a good swimwear model? And he could break down all these classifications of like what women look like. She's too runway and she's too glamour yeah. and she's too like celebrity. I don't know. It's the same thing here. Like I feel like this isn't a fashion model. He's a good looking guy. I almost like the texture on his shoulder. I feel like I would like that more. I can see what you're saying where go more with the retouch or less with the retouch. You probably don't want to go less with the retouch. Well, you go less with the retouch, just right but on it's, his face. But it's somewhere in the middle where, like, yeah. I see all the texture and the highlight, but then around his nose and his forehead. And, like, you see that white spot on his knee. It's like little details like that make you feel like, oh, maybe this isn't quite as perfect as you think it, uh, you know, when you first see it. So, I don't know. But I, I this might be my favorite image of the critique It so definitely far. has a good color grade and mood to it. I, I, I really do like a lot going for this. I still gave it a three. Community gives it... 3.23. One thing that I wanted to mention about Charleston was, uh, oh, and you guys might find this interesting. David is currently filming a full length macro photography tutorial with a photographer who won mm -hmm. the macro photography critique. critique the community. So we are keeping our eyes out for good talent. To Not only that, with. but he brought a girl with him, Liza who is a bug handler. She grows all the, like, do you grow bugs? Do you raise bugs? I raise them, I don't know. Ra I guess raise them. And yeah. she brought all these praying mantises and like strange jumping spiders from Asia. They're all in my house. Yeah. And then she tells me, she, he says, oh, she's a great photographer as well. I see her work. She was in the critique and I'm like, I think we said some ridiculous <laughs> stuff about her work and she's explaining. I think she was the second highest rated image. Yeah, she had some image of like the mantis with the like sticky, glowy, transparent skin. Mm. And we were like, what is this? Yeah, yeah. So she told me everything about it. So she helped source all the bugs 
for this tutorial that we are releasing soon. So, But I also wanted to mention, while that was all going on, like we were whining and dining them, taking them out, you guys went to Home Team. Yes. You came back. My had, favorite. Oh, I love Home Team. It's a barbecue place. You came back with some wings. Not just any wings. The best wings. I think these are the best wings I've they're the best I've ever had. I will put home team's wings up against any wing. Who who went? Was it, it was Kristen? Like Tam or something? I thought it was Kristen was like, these aren't even that good. She didn't know wings. <laughs> but a lot of His people girlfriend. don't like it because it's not buffalo wings. They're not like deep fried with buffalo yeah. sauce. This is like a dry rub that is, you know. Anyway, anyway. I'm a vegetarian, but I love the taste of meat. And if meat is about to be wasted or thrown away, I will then eat the meat. So I started eating some of these chicken wings. They were good. And I'm like, man, these things are good. Man, I miss meat. It's been a while since I've had chicken. I pick one up and I almost take a bite. It has feathers still attached to it. Like feather feathers or like, sometimes they have these little like no, no, no. hairs or no, something. No, 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 feather. I'm not saying it had like a peacock feather coming off of it, but it was like a nasty ass feather that had been through the deep fryer. It was disgusting. It was fresh. Dude. I. No matter how good it tasted, I was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm so glad I'm a vegetarian. You know, now and that you I mentioned threw that, them right in the trash. I don't see many wings anywhere else that have the little, I've always seen the little like hairs or maybe they're feathers, like little something coming off. And I, first time I saw it, I was like, what is that? But then I just grew to know that's what home team's wings have on. <laughs> they just come so with the feathers. Is that like a fresh thing? Like you have wings that are so fresh that they've plucked the feathers out themselves? I don't think that's a thing. I don't think that's a thing. I would have just pulled it out and continued to eat. I am that Alabama I, white sauce. I bet on there. you would have. I bet you would have because you're disgusting. Home team wings. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Three stars. We agree. I feel like this is a good shot. Great posing. Good lighting. I feel like the weak link here are the subjects. You know these the weak link every one of these people could whoop your ass i'm not saying they are they they just don't look like, like fighters like professional and i guess they are professional fighters but something about it just and the other the other thing I that mean, i'm noticing we watch, we're gonna watch the ufc tonight well not tonight but the saturday yeah i forget what day it is yeah there's watch. some guys in the ufc that don't look like Fighters. They're that's either a good point. super skinny or they're super fat. That's a very good point. But here's my other issue. Here's my other issue. Look at the way some of these people are photoshopped in. Like, like, doesn't that guy look like a giant? Not necessarily in height, but like his head is way too big than the guy next to him. And then look at the guy second to the very end, like on the left. They look like third guy looks tiny. Like they I know. I know, so I think each of these images was taken separately and then photoshopped together, and I think they did a decent job, but there's some wacky lighting and some wacky sizing going on here, which makes me not give it a four star. It's also just hard when you have this many people in such a wide shot to like, you almost, oh, I know. You I almost know. need the text and like other things to bring it together. Like I can see this being printed like on the side of a van, like a bus. Yep. And there's other stuff going on, but, um, you know, if you're going to go this composite route, you could, you know, if the guy in the middle is the owner of the gym or something, you could make him bigger and start stacking people up in the background, kind of like a movie poster where you kind of have hints of people. But, you know, if, if you had a client and that's what they wanted, I can see why you were paid for this as well. Like, if you had to shoot your local gym, I mean, lately, I feel like, you would have shot it worse than this. You've been dropping the ball on some of I your... have not been dropping the ball. Yeah. Maybe a, good... a little bit. Maybe a little bit. All right, community gives it 3.17. The birds. The birds. You know I'm going to love this shot. You think they destroyed a camera in getting this photograph? They were probably a little smarter than me. They didn't turn their back to the waves, that's for sure. Well, they, they kind of are. Yeah, I mean, they're looking at it. All right, are you ready? Um, yes. Three, two, one. I am in between a four and a five on this. Here we go. I just feel like, yes, this is over the top. Yes, you know, there's a lot of trickery going on here. 
but I love this image and maybe I'm loving it from more of like a artistic painterly standpoint than a realistic photography standpoint, which is fine. But I feel like this looks great. I just, I go to the horizon and I see that halo. Yeah. How sharp I the wave I didn't is. Really, didn't really look at that. Um, the yeah. color is just so different. Like we just did a tutorial with Mike Kelly on how to do sky replacements. And so much of it is blending a realistic sky like, yeah, is the right. sun setting behind them, but then there's a highlight off camera to the right casting onto them, and then the water's super blue and even desaturated in areas. Like, there's areas it's like black and white. So, you know what I think the photographer could have done to, to hide that just a little bit? Because I don't know, like, if you, if you look at the sky, at the bottom of the sky, it's very red and yellow, but then at the top, it is blue. So you could make the argument that above the camera and potentially behind the camera, it's all blue. So except for they're lit with warm light. Like there's warm light hitting them everywhere except for a little part of her dress. Yeah, but that's direct sunlight. You're right, you're right. But I was just going to say, what if they took some yellow and just brushed the top of that wave in the background and did a gradient from yellow, which would be under those incredible clouds in the background to the blue that they're standing on and below them. Do you think that, cause, cause you're right. When I, when I look at the edge of that wave in the background, <laughs> yeah. like that's the most ridiculous part. I don't know what I would, I mean, obviously there's some post-production that needs to be done. What? Like redone. What? Like blur that wave or at least get rid of the halo. I mean, if you go to the far well, what left. What about the color? What about I just, what I just suggested? I'm not so sure the water even needs to be blue. I mean, if you made the water warmer overall and just made this a really strong sunset shot. Yeah. I mean, I see that the, the contrast and color is kind of helping this image in some way, but it's also so over the top that, you know, like, like there's parts of the wave in the middle right under their feet that's black and white. It's like they desaturated it. And hmm. I don't know, like, I love the theme. This has like a romance novel look to it it's kind of the instagram coloring it i can see why this image again was bought or used licensed for me the hardest part is the sky replacement it's because it's so obvious that it's a sky replacement one because of where the sun's setting and where the sun's lighting them but then that hard horizon like they should make that selection and then pull it down and feather it into the waves because right now you have a white haloed line, like a pin tool. I right? agree. Yeah, it's, I didn't notice that. It's too much, but I love the birds. I also feel like, is there some pin tooling going along this little rock on the left? There's some funny business. There's just, it's like ultra sharp. I don't know. There's something strange going on with a lot of this. Community 3.07. Right on the money. You got that one. Not that we're keeping score with yeah. that one. Are you ready? Yep. Three, two, one. Four stars, we agree. The lighting on this is incredible. Like the coloring, the way the plates, like the coloring on this image is great. The things that are pulling me out of it, I don't know if it's like the perspective and the distortion or just the styling of the food. I, and I know why they did it. Like a hamburger, you don't want to just show the bun, but these two burgers are just coming at this weird angle. Yeah. I don't know if you could like cut the burger or I don't know how you solve that problem, but. The other thing that I'm noticing there, you know, obviously the key light is. Up and up behind. Yeah, above it's the, like above yeah. uh, the shot, which is the way all food photography is done. However, this shot also has a pretty significant fill light coming bottom. from below the camera. And you can really see it on that bottom burger's bun. Yep. You can see that highlight on the top. I feel like also it kind of cheapens the... it. Yep. But then look at the uh, top of the salad on the right. You can see along the uh, nuts, there's that hard shadow being cast. Yeah. And I feel like that is flattening out this image a little bit and making it look cheaper than it needs to. If you look at this sandwich that's in the very top middle and you look at the beautiful shadow that it's casting on the plate and then look at the burger at the bottom middle that's casting no shadow because there's that fill light coming in i mm. feel like you're losing a lot by having too much 
fill, at least in the bottom half. I feel or like... Or the fill's too close to your your plating. Yeah. And it's affecting the the bottom portion of the image more than the top. Yes, exactly. So you would bring your fill, like move it back five or ten feet, I don't know how big it is, and then make it larger. Yeah. And then you could have a soft fill that's affecting the whole image. You just have fall off. More well, light on the bottom and less light on the top. Oh, I mean, if you look at the, the shadow cast by these nuts, it's almost like the fill light's a bare bulb speed light or something. Yeah. Um, that's and you my can only see, critique. if you look at the cherries and, and like the old fashioned or whatever that is, you can see where it is. I mean, it's... Well, I'm trying to figure out what in the world I'm looking at. Like in that left cherry, it looks like maybe above this plate are two umbrellas or something. And then maybe there's another one, camera right. And then what is that little dot in the bottom of that left cherry? Is that a little speed light or something? I'm not sure. I almost feel like these are like kind of like little flash disks. It's something that's like collapsible that they're firing light into and they're kind of uneven. Yes, it's definitely a bunch of f-stoppers flash disks it's sold not on Amazon.com <laughs> or B and H Photo or wherever fine photography products are sold. Make sure you put some flash disk promo while I say that. Sure. In the. In this I will video. say though, like for Jin, I mean, I I go. You do you go to Yelp very often when you're somewhere? Yeah. This type of imagery grabs my attention. Like yeah. I would say, oh, like we're safe to eat here. Like this <laughs> yeah. all looks good. Yes, that that. There's enough to hire a photographer. Restaurant, yes, cares enough about their food to hire a photographer and like they care. You're, you're gonna go in there and it's not gonna be dirty. Yeah. All right, community gives it 2.95. This is one of the lowest rated images right. we've rated so far. I gave it a four, I loved it. So one little story we can talk about in this critique is Dorian. Mm -hmm. And I just find it a little ironic. I just escaped Dorian. I was in Miami yesterday with it right off the coast thinking my flight's going to be canceled. I went from Charleston to Miami to Puerto Rico. But I found it a little ironic how everyone's been messaging me. I don't know if you've gotten these same like text messages. More messages in my whole life. Oh my gosh, are you going to be okay in Puerto Rico with the hurricane? Yeah. And I believe it was a tropical storm at the yeah, time. Yeah, it wasn't even a hurricane yet. And at most, they said it might become a category one. And everyone was like, I hope you're doing okay down there. Are you going to escape? How are you going to get out of there? Yeah. And then it, it went from like maybe hitting the, the West Coast to then maybe hitting us on the East Coast to hitting Culebra maybe as a... There like, was some flooding apparently the next day. I think some bands came in. The and, beach flooded a little bit. But yeah, it was like almost nothing. Here. But now, and, and I don't want to make light of like, we've been to the Bahamas how many times? Like it's horrible what's happening there. It, it, I think it's the worst hurricane hit I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, it has been on the Bahamas for almost 48 hours straight now. Yeah. It's moving one mile an hour. Yeah. Category it's, five. It's going to be devastating. Like, it's crazy. I was telling Kristen, I almost feel like I kind of want to buy a flight soon and like, Go build a house or something. I was like, thinking the exact same thing. That Maybe would be really to interesting to do. But I just, I just wanted to bring it up because there's this hurricane. Like it's, I think now a level two. It's downgraded quite a bit, but it's been sitting off of Florida this whole time. And we have homes in Charleston. I'm thinking like, are we going to get hit with a four or five? I'm not so much worried about the hurricanes here, especially in this house. Yeah, the homes here are built so much better. Like we're in a concrete fortress. I don't think. I mean, this house was hit by a Category 5, and it was fine, yeah. first of all. If our houses in Charleston were hit by a 5, I don't know they'd be standing. Charleston would be gone. Yeah, which is horrifying. And, yeah. and so I think Charleston's about to be hit by at least a 2, if not a 3. Yeah. Well, we'll and see. By the time this video comes out, if it's not continuing to move at one mile an hour, yeah. we will know the outcome of this hurricane. But You know, Maria was really bad. It was a Category 5. Everybody knows about it, especially with Trump talking trash all, all the time on Twitter now. But the truth is, is that most of these tropical storms only become hurricanes after they pass Puerto Rico. Yeah. So it's very rare for Puerto Rico to be hit by hardcore hurricanes. It's way more dangerous than Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, North Carolina. But I think I read maybe with uh, Matthew or something, Florida has only been hit by like two or three hurricanes in the last 10 years. It's a crazy How can that be true? I didn't believe it either. And then I looked it up. And when Matthew was hitting, they were like, Florida has not had the eye of a hurricane hit. Oh, the eye. They get hit by bands all bands, the time. Bands, yeah, but yeah. like, yeah, but 
it really counts if the eye hits you. That's like the worst part. But Florida yeah. went like 10 years without a hurricane hitting it. And I was like, that can't be true. Mm. We've had two or three um, in the last two or three years. But um, so hopefully we will not hear about devastation anywhere on the East Coast in the next few days. But yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's get back to this. Now, uh, this we know who shot is a this. classic. <laughs> So our buddy Noam Galai, he's the guy who shot the stolen scream. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, Google the stolen scream. F Stoppers made a video years ago about it. It's crazy, crazy story. But Noam now works for Getty. So he's always at these events and he's shooting celebrities all the time. Yeah. And sometimes he can take kind of studio style shots of them. And other times he just gets these like shitty snapshots of people. It's almost like paparazzi. Yeah. But, but he's there on location. Yeah. But, he's not like stalking them. In. Right, right, right. But because they're celebrities, these images might still have value. Now, if I remember correctly, he just put this on Getty's website and then it was purchased without him knowing because images are, you know, sold every day. Yeah. And then boom, all of a sudden, he's got the cover of Time Magazine with... President Donald Trump, like how insane is that? And I guess this is before yeah. he was president, but then he became president. So like, what an amazing story to tell your kids one day is like, I had the cover of Time Magazine with the president and it's not a good photo. Like, I think they chose this photo because it's not good. <laughs> and they made it super unflattering on purpose and they zoomed in on his face, which is horrible. Like. But the funny thing is, I think when this came out, Trump was bragging about this. I mean, it says March. Oh, not he liked. He's like only candidate to be the cover of. Yeah, I think, I think he was proud of it. So maybe he thinks he looks good in this. I don't know. I don't think he looks good in this. I don't think this is particularly a great photo. And it's one like no one despises Trump. He's always posting <laughs> stuff on yeah. Facebook. So like his most successful image. <laughs> Well, includes I mean, a guy that he... And just look at the resolution. I mean, who knows how zoomed in this was? Yeah, I would like know? to see the actual magazine because you think when you zoom in and, like, look at the magazine, like, it was a high-res... No, I mean, look, look. The, the, the text on time is sharp. Just look at how grainy this image is. It's like it was taken at ISO 3200 and, you know, with a 25-megapixel camera and then cropped in 90% to just get on his face. It's so weird. But hey, man, it, it was published. You got the cover of Time Magazine. That's an amazing story. And you always, it's like winning the Grammy. Forever you will be a Time Magazine cover photographer. <laughs> I know. But the question is, how do you rate this image? And how much did he get paid? Yeah, he, did he get paid, paid like pennies. a dollar? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think Noam's told me before and I've just forgotten. But I think he told me too, but I- He gets paid in such different ways. From Getty and from all of his other yeah no remind us in the comments both on YouTube and um, hey, we haven't even rated on the this page yet. no I like I don't know how to rate this obviously you know I would give up so much of my career to have a Time magazine cover but are we rating this because of the Time magazine cover or are we rating this as a shitty photograph of just some fat guy I think because this is printed on the time, I think you got to rate it as what you see here and the value that this has. Towards well, then it's five stars. It, it kind of is a five star image. Like <laughs> you put this at the front of your portfolio, right? I, and people are yeah. like, oh, I know that cover. You shot that? It's okay. Well, then, do we even need to rate it? Is it five stars? I, I think on principle, world class, unforgettable. <laughs> now, here's the question. It's not Trump, and it doesn't get published on the cover of a magazine. What's it, what's the rating then? It's like one? It's not <laughs> it a one. It goes from five to one? I mean, you know, it's still... There's still a lighting... I mean, and I'm curious to know, this is just like event lighting? <laughs> yeah, I don't but know. But I see photographers that light this way, and it's like flat, but I don't know. It's <laughs> shot to show a lot of detail. All right, let's move on. Oh, Community. Community gives it 2.84. And it's like he's looking straight down the barrel of that lens. Like, that's why it works is because he <sighs> saw Noam and just went right to him and he got the shot. I guess. I mean, if his eyes were just a little off on a shot, this telephoto, it wouldn't have really worked. 
It's because he's looking straight at you. <laughs> he should he should totally if he ever gets to meet Donald Trump, you should get him to check the the final yeah, box. Yeah, you're right. Get it on video. That'd be amazing. All right, next up. This was a weird, a weird, weird shot. All right, are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Are we looking at the same image? Yeah, this is like a four. What? I mean, I feel like the ice cubes are a little weird, but like... What? A two? Yeah, this is this was my least favorite. I mean, I don't love it. I don't think the creativity is all that great, but I feel like if you're a local brewer and you're making some alcoholic <laughs> beverage, right. this is a better image than what the majority of people are going to get. And like, so I I'm, don't like the ice cubes, but I feel like the, the bottles, water looks ridiculous too. Yeah, but I think if you looked at a lot of ads for high-end brands. Oh. A lot of the water and stuff looks ridiculous oh, as I well. I disagree. I disagree. I don't know. I think All right, this so is so here's a... something that I'm going to say and this is going to sound super racist, but then we will we will double check my racism and if I am right, then it's not racist. What? <laughs> Where are you going with this? So there's a lot of Indian from India retouchers out there, right? Okay. Fstoppers.com gets spammed all the time by these Indian retouchers. We're constantly having to ban these fake accounts. But a lot of them advertise like, we will do your retouching for you and blah, 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 there blah, is, blah. Uh, what's the girl we met in, in Alaska? Okay. She did a video where she said, I'm going to send one of her, my images to like four different retouchers at four different price points. Okay. And the retouching is ridiculous, but it's funny. Watch that YouTube video. Okay. So what were you going to say? You I think was going this to is say... I don't know how they do it, but I swear with these Indian retouching companies, they do something with the water like this that makes it look like this plastic fake thing. And so this to me, the second I see it, I just think like, this looks like some scam Indian retoucher that would be like scamming f-stoppers. Meanwhile, this photographer is hitting himself in the and head. No, like, I did the retouch. Maybe I'm wrong. How maybe can I'm you, wrong. I, mean, so I, wrong. Just, I don't want to say how can you because I know what you can do in post-production, but I think the majority of the reason the water looks this way is the way the photographer shot the water. But apparently they do it exclusively in India. Now, I could be wrong. Exclusively. We know photographers in the United States that shoot water. It like doesn't this. look like that. What? What is? The, how do you spell? How do you spell this beer? M Monty M O N T E S Berg B E R G. So I have found their website. They manufacture beer, rum, whiskey, gin, vodka, wine, and mineral water. And let's see, where are they located? Now, just because this is not an Indian beer does not mean that this photo was not retouched. Wait, you're going as far as saying this alcohol is from India? Boom! <laughs> Wait a minute. I told you, I told you. This company is from India. <laughs> yes, that is where they're located. Did you look this up? I did not look, I swear to you I did not look this up. I swear to you I did not look this I up. I wouldn't have thought this, like, I could see where you were going with the retouch being outsourced and who knows where it's outsourced from, but like you went as far as thinking that this company is from yeah, India. Yes. Yes. I don't know what so it the, is. So in your mind, the stereotype stands true. Yeah. Yeah. It's not racist at all. They're doing something in India with their liquid retouching and it looks insane. And I don't know how you're doing it, but it's crazy. Is it racist though, to be able to pinpoint where something is from? No, of course You're not. not saying no, of course not. I just knew everybody on YouTube was going to love to give me crap about that. But I'm right. I'm right. And you know what maybe it is? Is like they're photographing water with a, with a neutral background, like on a white or a gray background. And then they're photoshopping it onto a black background. Maybe that's it. I don't know what's going on. But then also you've got the like the weird black above the top of the bottle looks really bad to me. The label looks bad to me as well. I just feel like the lighting on the label should be the easiest and most simple thing. And this does not look professionally lit to me. I cannot believe you gave this four stars. 
I cannot believe it. I think it. it looks pretty good. I mean, there's parts of it that look a little computer generated, but again, I think if you looked up Mike's Hard Lemonade, like all right, let's do it. Let's look up Mike's Hard Lemonade. Would their gradients in the bottle look that different than this? Let's look. Yes, Mike's Hard Lemonade is going to look awesome. Here's here's like the first ad on Google. I'm not even going to say that's incredible, but I would say that's a four star image right there. It's just solid lighting on the bottle. It just doesn't look all that different to me if you had a black bottle. I mean, it's a different bottle, but like they went with the crusty ice and the drops where yeah. this went with Where the... is that? It was like cartoon ice? I mean, I agree. I don't like the styling of the ice cubes. You gave the... it four stars. I still think it's done pretty well. Like, I think it's a, I mean, if this is what India is producing, <laughs> you would say don't hire them. And I would say, yeah, maybe you should throw Throw them some work. <laughs> and then you retweak so, the so, Photoshop so, file. So, I mean, you rate most of Brian Rogers' images four. Yeah. You've seen Brian Rogers' work before. Yes. So, if you created a beverage company and you could have this style of retouching or you could have Brian Rogers' style of retouching, you're like, ah, oh, they're both about the same. Man, I, I guess I'm having a hard time distinguishing between the photography and the retouching. Like, what if the photographer... What does that have to do with anything? The photographer might have wanted all of this the way that it is and then said, hey, retouch the... How much of this was just outsourced? Oh, it, I don't know. I don't know that it, any of it was outsourced. It could be all the same guy. But I'm saying, like, the lighting on the bottle itself is bad. From there, we can move on to every aspect of this. It's like the drips on the bottle look bad. The reflections on the bottle look bad. The edges of the bottle have fake, like dark burning in. They look bad. I mean, I, the water I can't agree worse. zooming in that some of the water, it looks like it's not even in focus. I know. Okay, <laughs> like I wasn't even going that deep into it. I don't know that the bottle, the bottle looks kind of plasticky. I know, the whole thing is weird. And you rated it four stars. It's crazy looking. It's like, it's almost like a cartoon of it a is, bottle. It is, it is. I think you just looked at this image a lot more than me. Like now that I look at it, the edges with the black and then the white, it, make it, it makes it look like it's an opaque bottle. I know. It's not, and you know that it's a clear bottle. Yeah, that's a little strange. I mean, okay, so maybe it's a, it's still... <laughs> Didn't I start this critique by saying, I didn't want to put any images, you know, that are bad. I don't want to talk. You and did. like, I went hard on this. I apologize to whoever took this. But I, I you really... couldn't even find this image on Google. So maybe this company's not really using this image. No, no, no. I went to this company's website. All their images look bad. All, like all of their advertising looks horrible. Okay. So they just need to hire a better photographer. I guess so. I don't know. All right, community gave that 2.93 stars. So still could be in their portfolio. The, according to the community, and they rate. I we disagree. know the community rates hard, be, harshly because they want to win. I I don't understand how the community rated this 2.9, and like. Let's move on. I mean, think about it. The the sh this shot of the food is rated the same as this bottle. I don't get it. I don't get it. All right, next up. I mean, this feels like it had to have been published like an outdoor magazine, right? It's a great looking shot. It's got me. an editorial look to it. and There's, there's only no... a few publications that would use an image of a gun only <laughs> in this context. All right, are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Four stars. We agree. This wasn't done in India? There's, maybe it is, but it wasn't done in the stereotypical Indian way with plastic water flying about. Who's that Indian retoucher who's like flirting on steroids? <laughs> He's going to be sending you a message. He's going to retouch the bottle. He needs to retouch the bottle. That's true. Um, I don't know. I feel like the shot looks great. Obviously, they, they've created a little set here with the wood. I think it looks awesome. Maybe my least favorite part of this shot is the gravel on the ground. Yeah. Um, and the, the fact that there's like a few leaves down there. Maybe I'd like to see more better looking leaves down there make it look more fallish or something just seems like you could have picked those leaves up and yeah it just kind of seems junky but the gun itself looks good and um i like the the color tones of this image as well i agree like everything about it looks great the tones are cool the silver 
and the highlights on the everything looks nice. I, well, I, the community likes it less than the plastic bottle, and they've given it two point eight six. This is this is interesting, and I I do want to know how this was published because I could totally see this you know being some sort of hired job to shoot this new duo who's created this company for Wired Magazine or whatever, and this photographer created this super interesting concept with the with the background, this Tron look, um, which is awesome. Like, if that's what it is, it's awesome. If you're the photographer and it's like a picture of you and your buddy, I feel like not quite as awesome because you could have gotten better looking models in there. But if these are real people that needed to be shoot, shot for an editorial piece, I feel like this is awesome. Because I do not know what it was shot for, it puts me in between two numbers. But are you ready? I am. Three, two, one. I'm in between Clo a three and a close four. Close to a four, yeah. I kind of want to crop the bottom off a little bit. Like, seeing the left guys, like, there's, we talk, like, Peter always talks about leading lines with, like, shoulders and, you know, holding your sub and all that ridiculous stuff. When I go down to the guy on the left, his shirt, that little highlight, it just makes him look a little pudgy on the bottom. Mm. And then on the guy in the back, on the right side, his hands are in his pockets, but you barely see his pants. I almost just want to, like, crop in just a little bit. And when I, I do I that, like that yeah. when I do that, I lose the bar at the top, the kind of the set that they built or the, the edit that they put behind them. So I kind of like having that square, but well, I feel like... Just... I think it could be interesting having a little more black space on the top of the frame. Yeah. But very cool shot, and uh, I'd love to know what uh, what this was done for. Do you think for. the background is completely just made in Photoshop? I do think that. I do think that this was just shot. Because a lot of people, I mean, I saw it. Did you watch the VMAs recently? I saw the VMAs the other day, and they did this whole, like, 1990s tribute with like queen latifah and i don't know naughty by nature and all these people and one of the scenes i don't even know who that rapper was but they go into the crowd and they're using those lights that i did the review on the cusinar lights you know okay. and these are video these lights are in all the like rap videos like you can yeah. just run them on battery power but you can also put them in a crowd of people and have like this really cool light that people can wave around this isn't that light because you can see how thin it is and you can also see how sharp it gets at the bottom but a lot of people are lighting their portraits with those, but then you could easily probably just draw this in Photoshop and you know blend in some blur and and light to create that. Which I think the big takeaway I get from this is like you could be so creative just taking a simple portrait that's lit with you know kicker lights Absolutely. and then make anything in the background and that's really cool. Community gives it two point eight five. They like the plastic bottle more than that. Oh boy! Did you watch this fight? Oh, this is this. Rome uh, what's his Yoel name? Yoel Romero versus Romero. Paulo Costa. Yeah, man, they were slugging. Yeah, scary, slugging. scary, scary. Romero lost that fight, right? He did. He did. By decision, I think. Yeah, they went the whole and the whole time. I was like, one of these guys is going to knock the other one out, but they never did. They made it all the way to the end. So Patrick and I, for literally years now, have been trying to get behind the scenes at a UFC event. Because we know multiple people who shoot for the UFC outside the cage, like this guy. And then I've also gotten to meet the guy who works for the UFC and shoots the cinematic footage outside and inside the cage. So All the promo reels that you see for the big fights, he shoots. Yeah. This is Alex. Yeah. And then he also does the, the web series, right? Yeah, the... Uh, or he used to? Does he still do that? I think his team does it. I'm not sure. Like, he might be kind of in charge of people at this point. Literally, but... any time you see the UFC fight and there's a break, he's, like, in the ring shooting and then yeah, everyone comes out. Yeah, you always see him. He usually wears a black baseball cap. But I have been trying to get him to get us approval to do a story on him and his team. It's been a slow process. Very slow process. So if you're watching this, get on it. He's like, I tried, and I they, they just are like... They're what in is Abu Dhabi Stoppers? right now. I know, dude. If we could go to Abu Dhabi and film, that would be so awesome. No, we're not. But we gotta, <sighs> we gotta. What's the next big fight? There's like, yeah, I'm trying to remember. They're gonna have a Connor fight, right? He's got to come back. I hope so. I hope so. All right, let's rate this. All right, three, two, one. 
Okay, so I went three, you went four. Here's my deal. What's your deal? Here's my deal. Obviously, these photographers don't have any control of the lighting. They're having to shoot through a cage. They're just hoping to capture. They can't move. That Most of them, I yeah, think, you can't just move. Kind of you have there. to capture this incredible moment. Um, so to me, it it comes down to the moment that you captured, right? Does, For a fight like this, two well-known fighters, if you're ESPN, you're going to run the image. Yeah. That we know this went to decision. Like, we know a lot more about this fight than the average person. Yes. So, like, maybe the final image is, like, them standing side by side. There was no definitive blow. Yeah, but but here's the other thing. We also know that Romero lost. We also know that this small jab wasn't one of the biggest power punches of this fight. So, for all these reasons, I give it three stars. It's a great shot. Obviously, it should be in your portfolio. But this is not the shot of, you know, Daniel Cormier getting knocked out with the head kick by John Jones. Like that is so crazy. That's like a moment Do you moment even think this is the shot of this fight though? That's kind of where I was going. No, that, I don't think so. I'm sure there are probably better shots from this fight because there were so many incredible punches thrown in this fight. And this, this is, the one is a where jab. Like, I, there were like groin kicks and like a finger to the eye. Was that this fight? I can't remember. Seems like that's been every fight recently. But. but that's what's difficult about this genre, especially the photojournalism thing, is we do these critiques all the time and we never know the stories behind them. Yeah. And so sometimes you see the picture and it's misleading or it makes you feel like, oh, you missed the moment or... Like I'm not you would sure. think Paulo Costa is losing here. Yeah. But he won the fight. So it's kind of... And I'm probably rating it unfairly because of that. But... I want to see the definitive history-making moment in a photograph like this, and I just know this isn't that. It goes. It kind of reminds me of the doing the shoot with Dave Lale with the snowboarders, where he was like, "If they don't land the trick, I don't publish it." If you had a whole portfolio of these images, you know, no one would doubt your ability. But if you knew the sport, you would be like, "Oh, that's the fight where he lost." And yet, like you're saying, it's an appearance that he's winning the fight. So yeah. it's kind of a weird psychological thing. Like when you just talk about the photography, the photography is great. I still think this is a four star image. But when you know the context of it, you know that the, the image is a little misleading. Community gives it 2.9 stars. It's pretty cool that we have people in our community shooting for the UFC though. Yeah. Why don't one of you get us early access before the fight, during the fight, I can just sit down right next to Joe Rogan. It'll be great. There a big fight coming up in Australia. Oh, that's the fight. Yeah, that's the big one. It's um, uh, Stylebender versus uh, Whitaker. That's going to be crazy. Anybody in Australia who can get us into the UFC, if you can get us backstage passes to the UFC in Australia, we will come out there. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one. I was in between three and four. I freaking love this image. Really? Like, I'm so excited to see a landscape photo that isn't some place I've seen a thousand times and the, the drama in this. And this is cool. I really like this. I really like it too. I just felt like with, with the blown out parts of the sky a little bit on the right, like maybe those could be toned down a little bit. Um, but I love this as well. And like you said, I'm so sick of landscape photos that are all the exact same. It's driving me crazy. This looks like a unique shot. Does it look, and I don't know how to how to articulate this, but does this, and maybe some of these other images have this too, does this image have too much of a photography style to be as mainstream as a lot of the images you see in the commercial world? Like this has so much dynamic range and it's so moody and it's so much color and like if you ever saw an image for solar power, wind power, or for this location, like this probably isn't a good tourism photo, but I don't know. It's, it's kind of like the blurry backgrounds. How many times do you see pictures in the real world where it's shot at 1.2 and the background is all this bokeh? I never see that. Yeah. But photographers love that style. Good point. It's kind of like that here. Like I love this image, but I feel like maybe I love it more because I'm a photographer and I know all the tricks and the post-production and the work that went into it and the slow shutter with the slight blur. But 
I would be curious to know again, like all of these, how this was used. Because yeah, it that's feels a, good a little point. moodier than what you'd see in your average publication. Yeah, and a little creepy. Community, 3.12. This is that like crazy location that has one of the most famous photographs ever that looks like a painting. Oh. It's like this hill in the desert is positioned just right. Like speaking of locations that everybody shoots. Huh. It's like you could shoot telephoto and, and get this crazy perspective blend, but there's this one photograph. I want to say this is like, I'm going to butcher it. It's like Nambia or Nam, Nam, I don't know how you say that country. Somewhere in Africa. I don't know. But you would know I mean, this what picture. is going on with this, the lighting on the tree here? Is, is, did they strobe the tree? It looks like it's being lit from below. Yeah, I don't know. But when you also look, like look on the left side of the tree, you can see that tree limb that's going off to the left. Yeah, it's got it, the shadow. It of the appears other. to have that shadow. So maybe it's not being lit from below. Maybe it's being lit from the side and it's sunset. I, I can't understand what's going on. I want to say this location does some really strange things with the lighting. And that's why you can get these images that just look. Because it's also, maybe it's like a it's salt flat or a desert and you get the weird fill light and... This is one of those things where the, the main image, the, the image everybody knows, it looks like a painting, mm -hmm. but it's a photograph because of the way the light hits. Do you feel like there's no need for the top of this image? And if you crop in and make it a wide shot like this, it's a better photograph? I don't know. I feel like that line on the top gives some context of like you're in a valley. It definitely gives context. And it makes it feel overwhelming. Like, yeah. There's a sense of you're in a low spot where if you crop it the way you did, you can't really tell. I mean, that's pretty crazy looking too, but. All right, let's rate it. Three, two, one. Three. I'm in between three and a four. I mean, I feel like this is pretty amazing, but. It's weird. I, usually I love shallow depth of field with stuff like this, but having that tree be right in front of the black area, it, it's like I want more detail on the background for some reason. And the red part being blurry feels strange to me when I normally like it. The black line and the shadow, whatever that is, it just, I don't know, it makes this image a lot creepier. The normal images you see from this location are not, they're strange, but they're not really creepy. This has a weird feel to it. Like, why is he bowing down to the tree? I love that the person, I don't think this image would work much at all without the person. I agree. The person makes this shot for and sure. Thank goodness he's not just giving that like hero pose. They came up with something clever. <laughs> all right, community gives it 3.37. Three, two, one. Four stars, we agree. I mean, this is this is beautiful to me. I feel like it's so simple, so symmetrical. It's just, I don't know. You have this monochromatic background, maybe a hint of blue, and then this beautiful orange building that pops right in the center. I think it's great. This is definitely all about color and composition. Yeah, it's so simple, you know? And I don't know what this, I mean, this could be used for a lot of different things. It's almost like fine art, but then it could also be an editorial on, you know, I assume this is like Norway or something. Yeah, great shot. Community agrees, 3.37. And we're going to go back to the highest rated image. This is what you guys have been asking for. Oh boy. Here it is. <laughs> This this also has a slight Indian retouching vibe to me. Not in a bad way, but just like in a color way. There's something going on with these colors that, again, I see in a lot of these... In India, huh? Indian retouched images, yeah. I'm ready. Three, two, one. I'm in between a three and a four on this. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful shot. See, I feel like I was... I was questioning what would make this a five. Like, I just feel like there's just no part of this that seems realistic at all to me. And I, really? 
I mean, look at the lighting on the sky. Like, there's like the sun is behind the bird and the bird's being lit from below. So, no part of this feels real to me. It feels super retouched, but that's almost like what makes it so beautiful. It's, it's this over-the-top thing. Now, Patrick, because he's an idiot, thinks this looks real, but it doesn't. Very similar to the <laughs> bottle of beer. This is ridiculous, but I think it looks good. Where do you think the light is coming from in this photo? Well, the, what they're mimicking here is like, it's either right behind the bird, or if you look at the- uh, Behind the bird? Well, I mean that, you know, they've-, they've Like it's feet, like left, camera left? Yeah, they've, they've brightened up some area there, but I mean, if you, if you look at the, the clouds, it's like the sun would be up and to the right. Yeah. Which also makes no sense. Like the bird is obviously being lit in some way from below. Or, or they've just recovered so many of the shadows on the bird. Maybe, maybe they were able to shoot the bird in an overcast position. They were able to recover a bunch of those shadows, bring out all those vibrant colors, and then they just Photoshop in some over the top sky. I would be curious. What are you suggesting? I don't know. That they took this picture of the bird flying in front of the sky? Is that what you're trying to tell me right now? I don't I don't shoot birds enough. But you but I do know, know photography. Some, I know photography, but I also know sometimes there's some weird things going on where the bird is in the shade, but the sky was dark enough to where there was this perfect moment where you could get a shot that this is definitely his post production. There's no question about that. But Dude, I am so good at spotting retouching that I can tell what region of the world the retoucher was from do you know how incredible that is if you go to our youtube channel and look at the last like couple months of videos we've produced specifically the ones where you teach us how to retouch at the end of the tutorials yeah if you took those images and just threw them online do you think our audience would be able to spot the retouching and tell you what part of the world it came from are you suggesting that my retouching is so bad, but also e so easily spotted that people would be able to pick me out of a group? Maybe, I mean, you're, you're saying you can do that for other people. <laughs> just I'm just wondering, some. it's a question. Just for some. I wonder if our audience can just see the retouching that you do and be like, that's a Lee Morris retouch. Listen, I agree that especially the football photo shoot it's not my, not my finest work. It's just work. funny to me to say, you know retouching so well, <laughs> yet at times lately, your retouching has been so off. You must remember. It's like the musician who's <laughs> like, I know all the scales, yet you give them an instrument and you're like, dude, that guy doesn't know what they're doing at all. It's not quite like that. It's similar. Because we had sponsors who asked me to show certain aspects of their software, okay? Like a hand is closed. All right, that was a mistake. <laughs> that was a mistake. But with some of the other retouching choices I made, they asked me to show certain features and I showed, would I put these images in my portfolio? No, they're not up to that level. But I was asked to show certain features and I did that Therefore, I think I did a pretty good I'm job. I'm sure our community 100% agrees with you. <laughs> All right, this image, final image had 3.55. Congratulations so. on the highest rated shot. David will reach out to you. You can get any tutorial you want at fstoppers.com slash store. Remember, if you wanna be a part of the next critique, it's only for photographers who have made $2,000 or more on the image that they are submitting or the photo shoot that they were hired to do. So if you got hired to like, we need you to shoot, you know, for today and some products or whatever, you can upload one picture from the photo shoot. You must tell us how much money you made and then you must tell a little story about how you were hired and what the job was for and everything. I think that'll be super inspiring if people submit pictures. The thing is, is that most super successful photographers aren't usually taking part in our critique. So it's time for you finally to uh, to upload your pictures. And the more money you made, the better. 
Yeah. You know, I, I want I want somebody to say I made 30 grand on this image. That'll be so inspiring to me and then everybody watching the video. So that'll be cool. Upload those pictures right now. We will see you soon. Thanks for watching.